Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a uh, solid evening. Welcome to the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame. I'm Jeff Gerstmann. Uh, pretty unorthodox uh, entry this time around. And something of a mystery. You know, like some things have been discovered about it in the years since, but mods on top of mods on top of mods. This is one of the first things. That I remember, you know, like uh, when I, I got a PC, I got my very own PC sometime in 1993. Now I had access to uh, Glenn Rubenstein uh, uh, s s sold me uh, a PC that he had received from Gateway <laughs> and uh, for a, a, highly, a highly discounted rate. And uh, his mother said, wait, you did what? And demanded that we get it, that uh, he get it back. I got my money back, and then I, I went and got a Gateway PC, a Gateway 2000 of my own. It came in a cow print box. So that was their whole thing, Gateway. It was, it was a weird... Anyway. And so I was off to the races with my own personal computer. Um, but sometime in 1992, I did have access to a, a DOS PC for the first time. Windows 3.1, all that good stuff. And... Um, you know, you get out there on BBSs, you get access to the internet, which that was probably right around the time that I got uh, access to my very first Shell account, which was uh, tied to the local junior college. I had a friend of mine who had already graduated from high school who was going to the JC, and I said, hey, go by the library and sign up for this account and then, and then give me the details so that I can use it. And um, suddenly I was online properly. Uh, not just calling local BBSs and causing trouble. Uh, I was able to access the entirety of the world and cause a lot of trouble. Um, I didn't really, you know, didn't really cause any trouble. Um, but you find shareware games, you find DOS games, you find pirated games, you find uh, gifts of naked people. Not even JPEGs. You just look at them full screen. Two hundred fifty. 256 colors and you just go, yeah, all right. That's pornography right there. They didn't even animate back then. These were dark times. You don't know how, how good you have it with your, anyway. Um, one of the things that I stumbled across in my travels uh, was this, this unofficial, this super bootleg, messed up, homebrew fan game. I mean, you know, like, well, you don't really use the terms back then, but you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a homebrew version of street fighter two created for the PC. Now there were, there were official versions of street fighter two. As the story goes, the programmer of this in Korea, uh, did not have, did not know that there was some official version of street fighter two. So he took it upon himself to make it. And so, Without the ability to rip sprites out of the cartridge directly, he had a capture card and he took a bunch of screenshots of the SNES version of Street Fighter 2 and then turned those individual screenshots after what must have been hours and hours of, you know, Photoshop, like image editing and, and all of, you know, coding an engine to, to begin with and turned it into a little something that became known as SF2 IBM. Now, we're not going to play raw and regular SF2 IBM uh, here today because th th the way that uh, this programmer coded it, there were a lot of text files that determined like, oh, when does it play certain frames of animation and, and what inputs do you use to make moves happen and, uh, and all of that sort of stuff. So as people started digging into this thing and realizing that like, oh, we could replace all this stuff. Um, you started seeing more and more additions to the game from a handful of people. Um, why don't we start with, uh, let's see here. We got old DOS box up and running here. Let's play some Jill of the Jungle, huh? No. Um, we'll start with uh, the SF Lou. This, is, uh, this one was made by a uh, Derek Lou and his friend Brian. Um, who uh, also posted a fact, but kind of breaking down what the what the files uh, did. Um, 
I think there's a, is there a batch file in here that gets it going? Yeah, here we go. I should, well, yeah, we should run the batch file. Uh, let's run the config. Um, I think this demands that you play as player two when you're playing alone. So we'll go, uh, oops, 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 oops. Okay. That doesn't matter. We need to, uh, yeah, sure. Punch one, two, three, kick one, two, three. And then for the left player, we'll just do that. Bop, 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 bop. And uh, save and quit. Okay. <clears throat> no, whoops. The batch file is still running. I was going to run it again. Instead, it beeped at me. That's a very... Ugh, okay. Let's go with Super Street Fighter 2 mode, I guess. Turn this down a little bit. Oh yeah, wait. But see, we got all the bios, like all <laughs> this hot uh, MIDI versions of the Street Fighter Two music. That's a pleasant noise. Good, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's so, like, look at the, you know, you can tell it's like just scrolling a GIF or something in the background. Like, it's not animated in any way. Uh, oh, man. And the guys, I don't know why. It, it's not every version of this did that. Where, like, at the end of a round, the guys got bigger. I don't know who decided along the way that that was a thing. And so, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it's not accurate, right? I mean, it's, there's some stuff that you go like, oh, that that's like the real thing. Uh, and then some of it you're like, okay, like these mid-air, you know, attacks and collisions and stuff are just like completely, completely broken. Super distorted audio, it, like it, I, and those are just uh, Voc files, VOC. Voc files are basically, I, I don't know, they're like lower quality than waves. No one uses Vocs anymore. Everyone used to. I'm worried that it's still too loud. I can't really monitor the. I'm like looking at the. You must have featured long. When this first came out, uh, I believe it was a, just like a two character demo that the programmer released. And uh, it was just like Ryu and Guile. And so like, I think the, the thing, you know, you gotta remember is that this was happening at a time when, you know, you were seeing, well, I mean, by this point, Super was out, but like when this, when this first came out, uh, Super Street Fighter, I don't believe was a thing yet. Um, but what was the thing were these, you know, Rainbow Edition and, and using Game Genie codes on the SNES version of the game to enable all sorts of midair moves and all kinds of broken stuff. And so I was always very fascinated by all of that. You know, the, the weird modified versions of Street Fighter 2 uh, that some of which existed in arcades. My local bowling alley eventually got an Accelerator Part 2 board and, and, and they, that was the, the only Street Fighter 2 they had was this hacked up weird uh, bootleg game. And and 
and it was glorious. I don't know what to, you know, I don't know what else to say. Like, it, it's uh, it's just such a fascinating, like, it's like seeing all these busted, unbalanced takes on on what was a pretty, you know, like, say what you will about the balance of the official games, I suppose, but but a pretty, you know, like a, an honest fighting game <laughs> being warped and perverted in all of these different directions. Um, I, I was just enamored with all of it. And so this was the most broken of them all, right? I mean, oh, is it just going to, did the computer just take over? All right. Well, maybe we'll watch some CPU fights. All right. Get your bets in. Um... And so seeing the ways that uh, the original programmer and then the people that would go on to mod it were able to do some pretty ridiculous things um, was just, it's just fantastic, just great. And, and there wasn't really a lot, like I said, there was an, an official version of Street Fighter 2 that came out and then super, I, I had the the licensed real port of Street Fighter 2 for DOS or whatever it was. And it's garbage. Like, the, in the, that's kind of the messed up thing, is for as jacked up as this game is, the moves came out when you did them. It just it felt like a more acceptable version of the game in a few ways. Like, not if you're playing with, you know, because it's, it's keyboard only and, you know, but, but at the same time, getting one joystick to work on a DOS PC in the early 90s was sometimes tricky, let alone two. The idea of getting two controllers working on one PC at that stage in the game was damn near impossible. And so someone was always on the keyboard anyway uh, in a two-player sort of setting. And um, that official port is garbage. Uh, it's, it's really terrible. Uh, for something that they were charging money for and something that they expected you to go like, oh, well, you like Street Fighter 2? Now take it home. It's it's terrible. Um, and so in some sick way, between this being zero dollars and being user editable, not that I, I, I did some minor edits myself to make special moves easier to do in some cases. Um... And some other fascinating, like, well, when we look at some of the other versions, you'll see, like, some of the kind of weird fake moves that people came up with. Uh, spinning pile driver ends the fight. Fantastic. Um, let's quit out of this and try it in, in hyper fighting mode, because that is more, uh, you know, this, this, uh, Super Street Fighter 2. This is all fancy. This is... It's too fancy. Alright, hyper fighting mode. Let's see what we get. <laughs> that noise is too much. Just goes through them. And there's no charge. The game doesn't really handle charge moves, so you can just go back forward and hit the button like it was friggin' Mortal Kombat or something. Oh, he... He came out of that uh, stun state a little faster than I thought he would. I like that it just goes through him too.
All right, great. We're going to win this one for real. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Honda, baby. It's such a, just a, like the, the concept, because look at how grungy, and this is stuff that was touched up by, you know, like, like the, the backgrounds and everything, the idea that someone just said like, no, I'm going to take, I got this capture card, uh, in the early nineties and a super Nintendo. And I'm going to take screenshots of, uh, every frame of animation I can get. And try to make it into a video game. It's like such a crazy concept. It's such a like a, a marvel of like reverse engineering, I suppose, you know. And then the engine, you know, that's just hey, the, like uh, this, this this guy was probably just a pretty good programmer, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and so there would be, you know, the the various mods and stuff would get updated as people would try to add new characters. I remember I can't find it now. That's the problem is, you know, this stuff is just scattered to, you know, and lost to time. Um, there's a version, the, the first version I saw that had additional characters um, was one that had Andy and Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury. And as someone who hadn't really played a lot of Fatal Fury, in a weird way, that was my first exposure to Terry Bogard. Uh, and that's where I first fell in love with Terry Bogard. And then, you know, I, then I went and played, you know, uh, Fatal Fury and some of the stuff he was in genuinely. I was like, oh, this is not nearly as fun. I don't know why. Uh, just doesn't, uh, I don't know, just doesn't capture the vibe the same way this weird ass bootleg nightmare does. Oh. Yeah, get him in the corner. Yeah. All right, let's quit out of this one and try uh, one of the different... Uh, I don't know that there's anything else to do here, is there? No. Okay, so let's see. Now let's try SF Gen. Um, are there any batch files here? No, it's just a... Any XE? Okay. Now, this version was by someone, I believe her name is Jen Delari. Oh, I'm, I may, I need to configure controls again, don't I? Yeah. Okay, this one, for whatever reason, uses player one. So, instead of player two, it's at some point that must have been fixed. Okay, uh, is there, is it just that? No. Illegal. Oh, setup. Okay, let's go. Dirt, 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 dirt. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then for right player, we'll go, I guess. In case we need it, we'll set those up that way. <clears throat> All 
Now, th I remember this coming out and just being like, oh my God, I can't believe. That this is even possible. What the hell am I even looking at? Now the sound effects for whatever reason are way quieter. Oh gosh. Now that's just a fireball with a light punch. Uh, you know, the, the engine probably wasn't developed to have like a hold down the button mechanic in there. Maybe we need to turn this up a little bit now. Okay. Uh, mm. Okay, let's just, uh, I don't know if she has her teleport. Uh, maybe this is uh, where we need to open up a text editor and, and look at some of these files. Finally, the fight you've all been waiting for, Molina versus Katana. Inside a bootleg Street Fighter 2 engine. And so, you know, in a lot of ways, I, you know, I wonder, it may, this probably wasn't necessarily the direct inspiration for the creation of Mugen, which is the, the fighting game creation tool set that uh, powers that uh, Mortal Kombat chaotic new era thing that I streamed recently um oh yeah molina win And so this was, you know, there wasn't, you know, there was no Mugen at, the, at this point. There was no, you know, Mike Tyson versus Rambo uh, <laughs> or any of the other stuff that that game has enabled. But in, in some ways, it's a similar spirit, especially when I think about the, the way that... Um, you know, players modded it to include Mortal Kombat characters and, and Fatal Fury characters and, and stuff like that. that. That's kind of as far as it got. It wasn't like some big, crazy scene of people editing themselves into it. You know, there were just a handful of uh, different variants of it that came out. I love that those are like the pictures are different sizes. Like what? It's just crazy. Battle the balls. Now there's one other version that I do have that is it was supposed to be the version that had uh um I thought it was the version that had Andy and Terry in it, but it doesn't seem like it is. Um, and that one is SF Warm. Um, I think we type, uh,
So if we look at this file, can I scroll back? Is there an easy way for me to? No, I guess I want to use edit if I want to. Oh, do I not have edit here? I guess it's not running. I guess maybe DOSBox doesn't come with a full on installation of DOS, does it? Um, but I can always go in inside of Windows and you won't be able to see that, but I'll at least be able to open it up and see if I can get a look at. Um, yeah, there are key, there are files in here for Andy Bogard. Um, up, up, one, up. Like, so you, you can kind of see what the moves, like what the inputs are. And so what they do is, is what they, what they did in, in some of the files. Um, okay. We just have. Does that just, will that just launch it? No. Okay. All right. What were our batch files again? Uh, I think we just want warm B. Does that one work? Yeah. Only one of these works, unfortunately. And so I think the different batch files are supposed to run it with like different characters. So the batch file that would run it with Andy and Terry, I think is, is broken, uh, unfortunately. But what we, what we do get here is they took some liberties with the way the special moves work to give it more of a rainbow edition kind of vibe. So you see Ken's Dragon Punch just stays on the ground. Oh, gosh. Air Yoga Noogie. Now I'm jumping in the air. But everyone still gets bigger. Um, and so, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool to see some of the, you know, some of the things that people were able to do to kind of make it a little more ridiculous, right? I mean, adding in some specials and, and stuff like that. Um, also, the the I just realized that the inputs for the special moves are like to do an uppercut is forward and punch. It's not even and like the, the hurricane kick is just forward and kick. And I can't figure out what the fireball is. Oh, timer scam. Um, I I love this thing, man. It, it's uh, it, it's it's broken, right? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say what an incredible video game, but I will say, like, what an amazing feat. When you think about it, the very idea of like, look at how grungy these graphics are. They, you know, they, someone with early 90s capture hardware and a fucking Super Nintendo and a dream. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, it's... It's really amazing. Uh, and then, you know, just the, the internet being what it was at the time, like, led to a few people modifying it and putting those out and... And for a while there, that was, uh, I don't know, it was kind of a big deal. I, I, it felt like kind of a big deal. When you look up, when you look for SF2 IBM online, which is the, the official kind of name of the original release, I suppose, as official as it gets, uh, 
you will find, you know, whether it's some old Usenet conversations or or whatever, like you will find some discussion of it. Um, there's like a hardcore gaming article from something like 15 years ago now that is, is you know, that is, and so in a weird way, like that, that was maybe one of the last things that I, that, that's one of the most recent things I was able to find when it came to people talking about this thing. Um, was 2010 and so i you know it's uh i'd be ashamed if this sort of stuff just got lost completely to time and you know thanks to the internet archive for archiving some of these pages there are still some pages that are live with downloads of the game when you look at it when you when you go looking you will you will be able to find it uh it was packaged up in three floppy disks like all the, the hot wares releases of the days were. Um, and so you have to unzip those all into one directory. And uh, and then from there, you know, uh, mount it in DOS, get it all in DOS box and, and so on and so forth. Um, I want to fight Guile because Guile does some really weird, has some like custom. Oh, there you go. A little hopping for, uh, oh yeah. She's got her, her fireball in there. Sure. Makes Vega noises. has a dive kick. Like that's the Chun-Li you all know and love. Okay, a guy, if I remember correctly, has some pretty broken, like, boomeranging sonic booms and, like, this weird rush kick attack that. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> Just what Guile needed. <laughs> and I, you know, the AI, I, it sometimes it just feels like it just inputs stuff randomly. I don't really know what the, what the AI is trying to accomplish. Sometimes it, it, it feels real. Oh, that's like a little, uh, like dash punch thing with the first frame of the sonic boom out there. I think that's what that was. But you know, this was an era when we started seeing these all these ROM hacks and 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 things of Street Fighter 2 in arcades where they were making it so when Guile did his flash kick, sonic booms flew out of it, you know? Like that's um, that stuff's just wild too. Uh, or, you know, or the thing, the crazy thing for me was always, you know what, let's play one of those. We're going to, we're going to limit the, 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 the induction is for Street Fighter 2 IBM and it's, and it's mods, but let's, maybe we'll play a Street Fighter 2 ROM hack here real quick. And cause it's relatively easy for me to fire that up. Um, But that stuff was always just so fascinating. And, and it led to, you know, like, like remember that this was also becoming the era of secrets in arcades. Mortal Kombat was creating an environment where, you know, uh, where there was no knowledge that was not power, <laughs> to coin a phrase. Um, and, and so having like ridiculous fucked up bootleg versions of Street Fighter became this weird, you know, it's not the same, not, not quite the same as like trying to figure out a fatality, but like you'd go like, what, what is this game even capable of? And then you'd hit the start button in the middle of a fight and go, oh, what the hell just happened? Let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at one of those real quick. Congratulations to Street Fighter 2 IBM for being, uh, amazing. 
I don't know why this window capture always defaults back to capturing my Steam window when when it's done, but I suppose that could be a lot worse. Let's, uh, this will probably be the easiest way to do this, I think. Um, let's see. We want the S's here. Bootleg with rules screen, no. So that's, we're kind of gonna, magic KO, <laughs> magic KO turbo nightmare crack. What? They were usually bootlegs of champion editions. So that's, that's kind of, uh, yeah, red wave, rainbow, here we go. Is accelerator part two, yeah, here we go, let's. Or I guess just accelerator. Yeah, here we go. Accelerator part two. This is what the the bowling alley near me had. So it's got these guys' phone number on it there at the top of the screen. We'll start with Ken. Just see what the mapping is here. Okay, they went with like a SNES mapping by default. And so the roundhouse version of that hurricane kick goes crazy. Uh, and then also there's this. If I hit the start button... It'll just change me into a different character. Because why not? Because why not? And that was kind of cool because sometimes you would get bored of playing as one character. So you'd be like, well, what if I just... No charge time on, on these moves here, by the way. And the jab version of it goes like that. You win. You know, and, and so Capcom kind of put out hyper fighting. At, you know, the story always went that Capcom put out hyper fighting because of stuff like this. You know, like the people wanted a faster game. Like these, these bootlegs were usually faster than the regular Champion Edition was. Um... And they, they wanted more. <laughs> and so Capcom made a balanced, you know. Tiger. Tiger. Oh, so focused on changing characters. Eh? But like all these projectiles are ridiculous, you know, just waving up and down like that, and, you know. And some of them moving super slow and, you know, some allowing you to have multiple projectiles on screen at a time. <clears throat> Pardon me. Jeez. <laughs> oh, that went bad. Um... So Street Fighter 2 IBM kind of like taps into that in, a, in 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 sort of a weird way too, you know, probably you know unintentionally, but uh, it's all kind of part of the same thing, right? Look at how fucking fast Zinky moves. It's stupid.
Oh, jammed his foot in there. Um, this was just, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I remember really being into the idea of, of playing these games this way. Um, with friends, you know, like going to the arcade and, and being happy to play. You know, I think you'd have to, obviously there's like stuff you could just do in this game that if you just did it over and over again would make it very unfun to play, right? So you'd have to kind of agree to not be as much of a jerk as you could possibly be. And so, you know, playing this game with people who were not your friends probably not much fun but that's how i you know i always played it'd be like me and probably glenn uh going and checking out this insane stuff um and ryan mcdonald um back in these days uh and yeah i don't know this, this look at how fast he moves dude why oh god It looks like they gave Ryu the low dragon punch here. Let's... I think you can just do that in the air too so you know uh on the snes there was fun stuff you could do with game genie codes because it was like it was even more broken so like it would do it would set up situations where um like you could interrupt a special move while it was happening and so there's a weird thing where like you could do a dragon punch and then just like spam the motion over and over again and he would just like do the first few frames of it and float off the screen as long as you kept doing it. Uh, and that's dumb. I don't know. Like, it, I don't. Oh, no hope of getting in on that with Honda. Anyway, the arcade bootlegs were in, in many ways, even more crazy than that bootleg PC port, I guess is my, is my point there. Um, and so that about wraps it up for those. Uh, it's really just, um, you know, I'm really only scratching the surface here and a ton of like, so th that was really a really big Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition thing. And then there were some that I think came out for hyper fighting, but it really, you know, that was a highly specific era in arcades. But nowadays, like people are still making crazy ROM hacks of games all the time, especially fighting games and, um, you know, Neo Geo, like a lot of the King of Fighters games, and there's a lot of Metal Slug ROM hacks that remove slowdown and do all kinds of other weird stuff like that that seems like voodoo. Um, and uh, if you want to really get full access to all of that stuff, I recommend a fork of MAME known as HB MAME for homebrew MAME. It's full of all these ridiculous... ROM hacks and, and all this crazy stuff that never really made their way to arcades. That's the, if, if it made its way to an arcade, then regular MAME will support it. If it's something that people just made and, and you know, edited the ROM dumps and, and put it out there for use in emulators, then MAME uh, usually overlooks it. FB Neo, which I was, was what I was running there, um, supports a lot of the same stuff that HB MAME does. You could go that route and it's friendlier in a retro art style environment. So if you're just not comfortable 
um, with a full on MAME setup, which I know can be a little intimidating. That can be a better way to go. Though honestly, getting FB Neo games set up in RetroArch is a whole separate, whole separate thing. I should, uh, John, uh, that's a good point. I mentioned this yesterday. He said that, that maybe I should do a, a video explaining how to set all this stuff up. At this point, I've been using MAME um, for, for like looking at the, looking at the calendar in the corner of my screen and seeing 2024 and then trying to do the math here. And like, I was using MAME in 96 or 97. So, um, over two decades, I suppose, uh, let's just, let's just go with over two decades instead of doing the full on math there. Uh, and I have gotten used to a lot of the ways in which MAME is quirky and, and how you can set it up and some of the tools you can use to make that easier, as well as just maintaining a ROM collection, uh, as well as setting up RetroArch, which for as much as it's made out to be, uh, an easy front end for emulators, it is also highly specific in some weird ways that I have kind of gotten a little better at over the years, especially setting it up over and over again on the Steam Deck and and some of that stuff. So I don't, yeah, if, uh, maybe that'd be a, a fun little, uh, Patreon video for everybody. If I just kind of, uh, ran through, uh, how I maintain my setups for, for some of that stuff. I know that's, that's, uh, again, I, a lot of people are always very confused by that stuff. Uh, I, I always look at it go, it's never that hard, but then I realize, like, oh, right. I've been, uh, installing MAME for, let's call it 25 years. And, uh, the way you run it now is not that different from the way you run it then, uh, from the way you, you ran it back then. You just did it purely from the command line back then. And now it's got its own built-in UI and it's, it's much easier now. Um, but auditing your ROM sets is actually the tricky part there. Anyway, that's probably for a separate video. I'll try to maybe, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll take a stab at that and see if it uh, if it comes out if it comes out useful. Maybe I'll uh, post that for people to uh, to watch, or if it's just like th three hours of weird emulator rambling. Maybe that would be fun too. I don't know. I don't I, I don't necessarily want to do like step by step hardcore step five. Put the ROMs here, you know, um, and instead kind of tell you why it's the way it is because that's kind of the thing about learning it is if you just say the ROMs go here, it's, it's a longer process to it than that. Anyway, congratulations to Street Fighter 2 IBM. Just to, one of those things that stands out from like my first year having a real PC of just like, wow. And, and, and really just like getting on the internet and, and discovering that, um, was hugely eye-opening, you know, not that there, there certainly was shareware on the Amiga and the Commodore 64, which I had before that, but like, um, obviously not like there was on DOS PCs in the nineties. I mean, that's, that's when it all happened. That's when Wolfenstein happened. That's when doom happened. All of that good stuff. Blake stone, all the important shareware games, Ken's labyrinth, you know, the real, the real, um, and so Street Fighter 2 IBM has always stood out to me as this, uh, I, I have exceptionally fond memories of like downloading this new updated weird mod and trying to figure it out all worked and, and just playing so much of it. And it's not, you know, playing it alone too, which is, it's not, the AI is not fun to fight against, but that, you know, I was, uh, you know, 16, 17. And, uh, I had the time, <laughs> I, I had more than enough time to make time for street fighter two IBM. And it's just a, a wonderful thing that I, I, and, and, and seeing Mugen and some of the other stuff that have come along always makes me think of street fighter two IBM and, and the weird mortal Kombat characters and fatal fury characters that found their way into those various mods and editing those text files and stuff like Mugen always reminds me of, of those weird old days. Um, and I don't know how to use Mugen at all to make characters or do any of that stuff. That would be something I would say would be like a really fun 
video, but I, I just don't know the first thing about it. It's such a, it's such a, um, well, I, there, maybe there are more tools now than there were last time I tried that. Cause the last time I tried it was probably a decade ago at this point. So, or more, um, anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you very much for, uh, supporting these endeavors on Patreon. Well, patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. Um, thanks to all you wonderful people and I will see you all again very soon. Take care.